Hey, what's up guys? We are back. So last episode, we've created this little jump pad over here that I didn't touch. There we go. So this little jump pad, we've created that in the last episode. And since we're pretty much just making gameplay prefab, uh, well, as for right now, we're going to make another one, actually. We are going to make a prefab that will teleport us somewhere on the map. So a simple teleport. And you're going to see that's <laughs> it's literally the simplest thing you can do. So, uh, same thing again. I will go ahead and create myself a cube, obviously. That is going to be my uh, teleport prefab. So, let's go with that. We're going to create a new material. Teleport. Teleporter material. There we go. Again, same texture because we don't have many of these. Here we go. And this one, so it's going to be let's say purple. Purplish is a good color for uh, teleportation, isn't it? There we go. Maybe more purple. Okay. So this is going to be our teleporter prefab. Let's scale it in uh, a different manner. Maybe something really tall. So three meters like that. Oh, that's too, that, that's too big. Let's put it at two. Okay. So this is going to be my teleporter over here. And I will just place it in the center. Okay, so let's rename our new object. Let's call it teleporter. And we are going to drag and drop this right inside the prefab folder. There it is. Now, same thing as we did before. We are going to add a new tag. So go over here in the tag section. We are going to do add tag again. Hit the plus sign. And this is going to be teleport. And um, this is going to be a little different this time because we need a reference to where exactly are we teleporting. We could make something static like if you enter this zone then we take this very object, we take its position, then we do say plus 10 and it's going to spawn around here. But we're not going to be doing that, we're going to make it more customizable. So what we'll do is we are going to create another object just beneath that. So let's create an empty game object with nothing on it and make it a children of the teleporter, just like this. So you drag and drop the game object right on top of teleporter. Now I'm going to rename this one Waypoint, and I am going to give it a color. So this is a empty game object. We can't really see it well. We have to select it right in our uh, hierarchy. So in order to give it some color to be able to see it, we're going to go right here. So up in the inspector, just next to the name and next to the tag list. We're going to set uh, an icon on that, so maybe the purple thing. Now, as you can see, we can now see it in the map. And I will be putting it at the 0, 0, 0, so it match its parent's position, in this case, the teleporter. And now we have to choose where exactly do we want to be teleported at. So, this is a teleporter, this is its waypoint. We are going to hit apply on teleporter first, so we make sure that every instance of that prefab is being um, saved and then I will take the waypoint and I'll put it right here so up there this is going to be where my player is going to be teleported so about there also one thing I forgot it's uh, in the teleporter prefab object we didn't change the tag so we added the tag to the list but we didn't actually set it to the teleport tag so go ahead and do that and make sure it says teleport up here and then we're going to hit apply once more. Now let's go see in the code how exactly it is going to look and this one might be a little bit uh, complicated if you're new with coding but we're going to get through, don't worry about that. So let's go down there. We're going to copy paste this and let's change jump pad for teleport in this case. Okay, so now here is what we are going to do in here. We are going to, um, first, we need a reference to that very object, so the teleporter itself. Lucky enough, we get that in parameter in our function on collider hit. So over here, this value, hit, is uh, what we entered collision with. In this case, the teleporter himself. So we know, uh, we have a reference to this very object. Now what we want is a reference to the other object, so to its children object. To do that, let's go back in our code and let's write hit dot transform dot get child. 
and this is going to return a transform as well. Now you got to give it which child exactly uh, do you want to find. So do you which exactly in my list of child he assumes that he has a list of children. So which one uh, do you want? Which index are you looking at? In this case, since we simply have a single child, then we are going to do zero. It's going to grab the first one. And now we have the transform of that children. So we have the transform, this component over here, of the waypoint. And inside of this transform, there is a position that we're going to use. So let's go down here and write, well, this is the transform, let's write position. This is the vector 3 we want. Now what we're going to do is, we are going to assign the transform of the player to that very value. So do we have... Okay, no we don't. So we're going to go down here and we're going to say transform.position is equal to hit.transform.getChild.position. So let's resume that line over here. Transform.position. Transform, in this case, is the transform of the object on which this script is. So this is the player script. If you remember, it's going to take the transform of the player. Then we do dot position, so the position of the player is going to be equal to the position of the children of the object we just hit. We just hit this object, its children is the waypoint, and this is its position. Okay, let's go in game. Let's try this out actually. So the jump pad, the double jump, now let's enter this. and as you can see it worked perfectly fine. Now uh, if you have the smooth camera you're even gonna get a really nice effect like we just did. So it is a really simple mechanic that can be quite fun and yeah so that's about it guys. Again thanks for watching if you have any suggestion please leave them in the comment section below. If you have any question also leave them in the comment section below. If you liked or enjoyed please leave it a like and subscribe for more tutorial. Again thanks for watching and I will be seeing you next time.